You want to see a magic trick? I just made $234.34 disappear. Yeah, so on this first one, I got it printed and mounted and they were supposed to put a luster lamination on it, but uh, there was some miscommunication at the lab and they forgot. No big deal though, I just brought it back to the mounter and he put the luster lamination on, but by that point, the seal had kind of already been broken, if you know what I mean. Uh, so there ended up being a bunch of dust under it. When you take a print home and open it and then close it back up and take it back and everything, it just causes problems. Um, so why did that cost me $234 if it's their screw up? Well, in looking at the print, I also decided that I didn't do a very good job on the file. Uh, the highlights were brighter than I wanted and I felt the sharpening could have been a lot better. So I decided I needed to redo the file and just, what the hell, just redo the whole thing. So the replacement is much better. I did a much better job on the file. The sharpening is much more crisp. Um, so I'm happy with the replacement and it's worth $234 to me. So this one is gonna be going in the garbage. I hate the waste of it, but uh, I don't want anyone else hanging it on their wall because I'm not 100% proud of the results. Mistakes like these happen. I chalk it up to the fact that I was uh, managing 25 different high-res files trying to get the perfect print out of each one of them. So one out of 25, that's a decent enough batting average for me. That's really the only somewhat bad news I have for you. The rest is all good news. I got my prints back. And they're glorious. Look at them. Look at that one. Look at these. Look at them! They are of course still behind plastic, which makes me sad that I can't see them in their full naked glory just yet, but that'll come in a few days. Um, today's Saturday, I install on Tuesday, and I'm just gonna keep them wrapped up until I get down there to keep them uh, maximally protected. And when I unwrap them, I'm going to have to attach to the backside of every piece my limited edition uh, print identification labels. This just has the image title, size, edition number, serial number. I'm also bringing printouts of my uh, wall mock-ups. Um, the thing I'm really excited about right now is all the costs are behind me. I'm finally done spending money on this show. And if you've been following this video series, do you remember when I said I'm gonna have to spend about five grand here, maybe 5,500, maybe even more. Oh, well, it turned out to be more. Um, the prints alone, and mind you, I got a lot of prints here, but the prints alone cost $1,619.68. The framing cost $4,000. $563. That adds up to $6,182.68. It's been an investment, what can I say? Now hopefully, of course, I'm going to sell a print or two. Um, I'll talk more about pricing a little bit later on in this video. but. It's behind me now, it's okay. No reason to dwell on it, Nick. Let's just focus on uh, getting this show ready. So the opening reception is on Friday. I am so freaking excited about that because I've been looking forward to it for months and there's well over 200 people coming. I think it's gonna be a hell of a night. Um, but right now I need to focus on the next step, which is install day. All right, let's do it. Do you know there's an industry standard for how high up off the ground artwork should be hung in a gallery? It's 57 inches to the center of the piece. At least according to Google, which is good enough for me. My laser level mounted on a light stand made this entire installation process a breeze. Not only was I able to easily find 57 inches across the entire room, but it gave me a vertical reference point to line up the center of the artwork. Find the center, 
Mark the top of the piece with painter's tape, measure the distance down to the hanging wire, and boom! I know where to hammer in the hook. Hang her up, level her out, step it back, and so soak her in. You know, it's amazing what good framing and a spotlight can do for a print. Suddenly, my little photo looked like a real grown-up art piece. Now, several people offered to help me install, including my wife, of course, but I decided to fly solo, because honestly, it just wasn't all that difficult. I had put so much damn planning into this thing that there really wasn't anything left to figure out or decide. It was just a matter of going through the motions. Unwrap the artwork, attach the rear label, find where to put the hook, hang it up, repeat. Simple. And I had set aside two full days just for this install. I wanted to really soak in the experience, so I gave myself plenty of time. That, and I couldn't bring all the artwork down in one truckload. I had the first room done before lunch, and it was a beaut. This is where things started to feel a bit surreal. I'd been staring at mock-ups, spreadsheets, and film scans for months. To see it finally come to life? pretty rad. Day two is more of the same, and by same I mean an enveloping sense of accomplishment verging on euphoria as the pinnacle of my 23 year pursuit of photography came to fruition. Nah, actually it was kind of hot and I just had to like prep and hang a bunch of artwork. Eventually I got all 29 pieces in their rightful places. It was starting to look like a real art exhibit. Actually, there was just one thing missing. Casa Romantica had foam core identification cards made up for each piece, which I attached with some museum putty. Okay, now it was looking like a real art exhibit. I also had to make up this little information sheet, which talks about how the images were made and what types of prints were on display. You know, something that would really butter up the big wigs coming through to pay top dollar for a Nick Carver original. My work was finally done. After countless hours of planning and agonizing, I had myself an exhibit I was proud to share with the world. Was it easy? No. Did I enjoy the process? You bet your ass I did. Will this solo exhibit at my local cultural center and gardens launch me into the world of ultra elite fine art sales where my pieces will sell for millions of dollars? I'm sure the Gagosian will be calling any day now. All right. The pictures are hung, the placards are placed, and this show is ready to get started. A few folks have asked me if I could do a virtual walkthrough here on YouTube because, um, well, you might be on the other side of the globe and you won't get a chance to come see this in person. So that's what we're going to do here. Let me first apologize for the echo and the sweat. Uh, I've been working pretty hard the past couple days getting everything uh, dialed in here. So uh, let's take a look at how this thing is laid out. So when you walk into the gallery, uh, there's two rooms. They're mirrored left and right. And uh, we'll start on the left here. So first off, I have three pieces here, little seven by seven inch prints. Uh, these are from some negatives I shot with the Mamiya C220, um, so six by six format. And I decided to include the film border in the print so that you know I can get my analog photographer street cred and really shove in everyone's face that this is film. Moving on, uh, this piece is called Bent. This was shot with 4x5 film. It's a 20 by 25 inch pigment print, and this might be my favorite in the show. I'm so happy with how this turned out. The detail in it is incredible, and uh, I just really like this one. Then, of course, we have Desert Layers number one. This is the piece that's been uh, hanging in my office for so long. Uh, it's a C-type print and shot on 6x17 film. Next to that, we have two pieces here uh, that I call Desert Dream number one and two. These are some uh, tilt shift blurs I did on 4x5 using uh, New 55 peel apart film. And um, I never really anticipated printing these images this big, to be honest. But uh, when I was putting together the show and I needed the desert theme, uh, they fit in perfectly. So I decided to get them printed and I like how they turned out. Uh, then we have a 6x17 shot, Desert Center Elementary. This is 12 inches by 36 inches. And um, you may not recognize this picture because I never did a YouTube video about it. Um, I did do an on location for this picture, but it was only as a, um, a lesson in my large format photography online course. Uh, so that may be new to most of you guys. 
Uh, moving on, we have uh, Arizona Highway here. This is a recent shot I did on 6x17, also a 12 by 36 inch print. And um, I'm happy to see this one in print because I took it so recently. So it's always nice having that kind of short uh, timeline between capture and print. Uh, then we have Symmetry, and this is a little bit bigger print. Uh, this is 14 inches by 42 inches, also shot on 6x17. And this always prints well. Uh, I always love seeing this picture on a pigment print because uh, it just translates really well to a uh, hand mule photo rag paper. Next to that we have Wardens, uh, a piece that I call Wardens, because it feels like these cactus are kind of looking over the landscape. They're not going to let you through if they don't want to. But this was shot on the same trip as Symmetry. And you can see I have kind of these three pictures all next to each other because they very intentionally have a similar color palette, similar theme and I thought they would uh, make a nice little corner triptych here in a way. Uh, then we have Desert Hopper. This is the other piece that's been hanging in my office for a while. This is 18 by 54 inches. It's a C-type print, and this might be one of my sharpest prints, uh, I think, that I've ever made. Um, so I really like that one. I'm kind of hoping that's gonna come back home with me and go back up on my wall in my office. Now moving into the next room. First off, we have the print we've been looking at all video. Uh, this C-type print, 18 by 54 inches, and like I said earlier in the video, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. But I'm also just uh, really happy to have this in the show because I haven't really shared this picture with anybody. Um, I didn't make a video about it. There's no on-location video for it. I just went out and took the picture and then didn't really do much with it until this show. So it's nice to see it in print. Next to that, we have some uh, pigment prints again. My American West triptych, I guess you could call it, all shot on new 55 PN 400, peel apart film. Uh, the bison skull, I decided to do a little bit bigger. Thought it'd be kind of cool having the, uh, the variation in sizes here. And the two feather pictures, as I mentioned in a previous video, um, if these sell, I'm going to be donating a portion of the profits uh, to the Ojai Raptor Center, which is a uh, rescue and rehabilitation center for birds of prey. And um, the smaller ones are 12 by 15 inches. The big one is 16 by 20 inches. And uh, I think all three of those would look pretty good over someone's couch, if I may be so bold. Next up is the Ice Shack, 14 by 42 inch print on Hannah Mule photo rag paper. And um, it came out beautifully, but I'll be honest, this print was a real pain in the ass. We just kept having problems with it. We had to print it like three or four times uh, to try and resolve these issues. The biggest issue that kept coming up was we, I was getting banding in the sky. So what was supposed to be a smooth gradient was getting bands in it. And I tried everything to correct it on my end. I redid the file. I uh, removed all sharpening from the sky. I even tried putting in some Gaussian blur on the sky to eliminate any possibility of banding from the scan. And it was still there. So we couldn't really figure out what was going on. Um, but I had this hunch that it's something with the printer. There's nothing wrong with the printer. It's just, it's having a hard time with the gradient. It, maybe there's some way we can kind of help it out. And so I said to my technician at the lab, you know, just humor me, I'll pay for it, but can we just try printing it 90 degrees? So, you know, it was coming out of the printer, uh, right side up. And I said, you know, can we just try printing it long ways coming out? Maybe the printer head will have an easier time getting the gradient smooth if it's going 90 degrees to what, it, what it's been doing. And sure enough, that fixed it. So I don't know what causes that. I don't know what the issue is, but it's good to know going forward that if I have problems with banding, I'm just gonna ask my lab, can you try printing it 90 degrees the other way? Um, maybe that'll take care of it. But even with that, the print still has like a couple of tiny blemishes on it, which I just have to be okay with, even though it's not in my nature. But I've learned that anytime I print uh, a large image on Hannah Mule photo rag paper that happens to have a lot of dark tones in it, a lot of blacks, um, a lot of shadows, it just puts up a fight. Um, it's like my black car. Any little ding or scratch in the door stands out like a freaking highlighter seems to be the case on dark prints on hand meal photo rag paper as well. So um, came out as great as I think it can. Um, and I think ultimately it's a beautiful print, but it just was frustrating for me. So glad it's behind me anyway. Next to the ice shack, we have these four guys. I shot these with Polaroid 51 HC film, which is a super rare peel apart film. 
And I ended up not using the negative, I used the print. So what you're seeing here is actually from the print of that peel apart film. And uh, you'll notice there's notched corners here. Um, that's because the print in real life has those notched corners. And I wanted the framed version to feel just like a blown up version of the real deal. So uh, I kind of tried to make it look like the actual print with the notched corners and the little perforation along the bottom. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the, how those turned out. Then we have Joshua Trees in Fog, a 20 by 25 inch print that I made actually quite a long time ago. This has been hanging above my couch for years. Now there's just a blank space there, which my wife is thrilled about. And this is the only piece in the show that has a deckled edge. Uh, I don't do deckled edges on my prints anymore. Next to that, we have two pieces that I shot on New 55 film out in the Kelso Sand Dunes of Mojave National Preserve, 12 by 15 inch pigment prints. Next to that, we have the other six foot wide print in the show, a C-type print of the garage that I shot on Route 66. This, like all the C-type prints in the show, has a luster lamination. That's why there's no glass in front of it. And then finally, we have our last pano of the exhibit, Desert Decay Number no. 2. It's a 12 by 36 inch print um, of a boat that I found rotting out in the desert. And I like this print a lot because there's a lot of little intricate details to study in it. it really holds your attention. And then last but not least, three more little guys, little seven by seven inch prints. And these ones were shot on good old uh, Polaroid 600 film. So uh, there it is folks, 29 pieces of my, uh, heart and soul, and blood, sweat, and tears. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, everything came together exactly as I planned, and I am beyond excited for other people to come see my work in person. So I just need to butt in here real quick because this is where I was planning on doing a really cool video transition where I came out of the gallery into the empty courtyard panned up to the sky and then panned right back down to opening night. Packed courtyard, cocktail tables, people having drinks. And um, it was gonna be great, but I just got so busy with opening night, I wasn't able to get any footage. In fact, the only video you're gonna see here is from pe other people who were at the opening night and were nice enough to let me use their footage. But opening night was insane. Um, the turnout was incredible. 239 people showed up, which um, I know that's not a football stadium, but for little old me and my prints, I was blown away by how many people came out. Um, I was kind of mingling through the gallery at some point, shaking people's hands, telling them thanks for coming. And then before I knew it, a line had formed around the gallery and actually out into the courtyard. Um, people lining up to meet me and tell me what they think of my work. I got to shake everybody's hand. I heard so many nice things that were touching and overwhelming and just absolutely incredible. Needless to say, I'm blown away. Um, I am so grateful for anyone, both who showed up to the reception and just all you guys out there on YouTube. Anyone who has given me some degree of support over the years, who has uh, enjoyed my work, enjoyed my videos, enjoyed my photos. I'm beyond grateful, man. It, it's, it was overwhelming, um, the night. Uh, in fact, by the time I got through the line and walked out into the courtyard again for the first time all night, uh, the tables were all torn down. They were putting stuff away. It was, it was emptied out. I, I really spent the entire night just connecting with people, um, which was so freaking cool, man. Um, absolutely unbelievable. Uh, three things kept being brought up to me throughout the night, which I thought were kind of interesting. One is uh, several people said that my pictures look way better in print than they do on the videos, um, which I take as a, as a good thing. Um, granted, I would love it if everyone could fully appreciate my photos through the videos, but my biggest fear was really that people would show up and say, huh, that looked a lot better on YouTube than it does here. Um, so I'm glad that's what people were saying to me. Second, uh, the number one piece that people brought up to me as being their favorite was Desert Hopper. Uh, people really pointed out how sharp it was, how much detail, the composition they liked. And I think something that was really working in that print's favor is, um, it was a C-type print on Fuji Pearl paper. 
and pearl paper has a metallic look to it. Um, it's a metal train on metallic paper, and so it just kind of looks real uh, when you're standing in front of the print. So I think that was uh, working to its benefit. And then the third thing people kept saying to me is that uh, I'm much taller than they expected, which uh, I'm used to. I'm six foot two, and if I have uh, my boots on and my big old hat, I tend to tower over people. But uh, there were actually a couple people that night that made me feel short for a change. Um, I sold two pieces that night. I hope the majority of the rest of them sell. I don't really want to have to take home 27 pieces and figure out where to store them. So I hope the rest sell over the next three months, even though my office is uh, drearily empty with the two pieces gone. Um, one other thing that happened uh, that night that was an absolute shock to me. Uh, my brother came out from Colorado. I had no idea he was coming. He coordinated it with my wife and he was actually standing in line in camouflage, kind of uh, back turned to me, pretending to look at the artwork all night real, real close. And then uh, I had a feeling it was him, but I wasn't certain. He eventually made it around to me and uh, I saw that it was my brother. I had no idea he was coming. I got to spend the next day with both of my brothers. Um, and yeah, it was, a, it was a real nice surprise, man. It, it put a nice, nice cherry on top of that Sunday, which was uh, opening night for my first solo exhibit. So, man, absolutely overwhelming. Actually, the next three nights, uh, I would wake up at 4 a.m. Just, my brain was just replaying everything from the night. Interactions, uh, things people said to me, things I said to people. My brain was like trying to process and comprehend such an overwhelming evening. Um, but thank you to everyone who came. Thank you to everyone who has sent words of support but uh, weren't able to actually come to the opening. If you find yourself in the San Clemente area, the gallery uh, show will be open until December 17th. So it's up for three months. Stop in, take a look at my prints, tell me what you think. And uh, I'm gonna be stopping into the gallery now and then between now and December 17th. I don't know yet what dates those are gonna be, but if you follow me on Instagram, I'll be sure and post every time I'm gonna be heading down there. So um, that's it, man. That concludes this series. Following me as I plan, prep, and execute my first ever solo exhibit. I hope you enjoyed the video series and uh, yeah, see you guys next time. Thank you.